Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's June 26, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, militarized police refuse to disclose public records request to the American people. Meanwhile, armed agents bust healthy family farms for conspiracy to sell raw milk. And a 73-year-old veteran is threatened with foreclosure for displaying the American flag. All that and much more tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. We'll begin with this tonight. Supreme Court bans warrantless cell phone searches. The Supreme Court ruled Wednesday that police cannot go snooping through people's cell phones without a warrant in a unanimous decision that amounts to a major statement in favor of privacy rights. And this decision marks a rare setback for the police state. And people say, you know, what are you guys always talking about the police state over there at InfoWars? I'll tell you uh, this story. When I first moved here to the city of Austin, I was on a date with a, uh, I'll say what it is, a sexy young thing. And she says, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a reporter. She says, what type of stories do you report on? I said, well, I do a lot of uh, Second Amendment stories. I do a lot of police state stories. And she kind of giggled and laughed. She's like, what do you mean by this police state? I said, well, I mean the drones and the surveillance and the wiretapping and the SWAT teams and the no-knock raids and the no-refusal blood draws on and on and on. And she said, well, they have to do all that stuff to keep us safe. Well, let's find out exactly how safe they are indeed keeping us. Law enforcement firm, nobody will complain about militarized police when ISIS attacks. A company that provides video training programs for law enforcement has caused controversy by suggesting that nobody will complain about militarized police in America or examples of police brutality when ISIS comes a calling. Now there's a tweet or a social media post from in the line of duty and they talk about the youngster Bobo, the infant who was burned by a flash bang grenade. Now if you guys may recall earlier, I guess it was last year, the uh, Chris Dorner situation and regardless if you believe everything in the Chris Dorner situation or not, that's not the issue. But you recall the uh, how the house burned down, the cabin burned down, and they had the audio video recordings saying, hey, uh, let's get the gas, get the gas, burn the gas, and burn this mother effort down. And then they go to the, uh, the press conference, I believe it was the sheriff, they said, sheriff, you know, what's this deal with your guys on, on audio tape saying that let's burn this mother effort down? And he said, well, you know, you have flashbang grenades, and you often call those things burners. Well, you can call them burners, I have no issue with that. But what about burn the mother effort down in the gas? But that's getting off to another topic. But let's talk about the youngster Bobo, as he's so affectionately called. Toddler critically injured after SWAT team tossed a stun grenade into his crib. A family says a SWAT team raided their home in the middle of the night and seriously injured a 19-month-old 19th month, 19 month old boy with a stun grenade. So the young man, or should I say the young child, was playing in his crib, the play area. The SWAT team uh, bust in tosses the flashbang grenade and seriously injures the child. Now going on this notion of all we're doing is trying to keep you safe. And as the officer in our last report was talking about, nobody's going to complain about this. Nobody's going, going to even mention this when you have a, a big terrorist attack, I guess, from ISIS is what they're anticipating. Well, my deal is, are you still the good guys if you're the one injuring the innocent people? I mean, like, yeah, so you have to crack a few eggs to make an omelet, but how many omelets, how many young bobos is acceptable to fight this big threat that I guess we have not seen here in the United States? Well, I guess since 9-11 on that scale, regardless if you believe that whole big thing or not, we definitely do have terrorists. I, I don't think all of them are hiding in a cave. Some of them are on uh, Capitol Hill in a suit and a tie. But that's just one example. Let's continue to move through here. SWAT team refuses public records request, says we're not a government agency. A regional SWAT team in Massachusetts is refusing to release information on raid statistics due to its belief that it is a private organization. So let's go through this. You work for the sheriff's department or you work for your local PD, maybe you're a Fed, FBI, whatever. Uh, you work for the government. So as a government employee uh, working off taxpayer dollars, if people want to know what you're up to, people should have the right to find out what you're up to, especially something like a SWAT team that is uh, involved in some very serious situations. Now I can understand you have uh, situations that may be ongoing and you don't want to interfere with the investigation by making certain details public. I can get that to a certain extent, but once the investigation is done, the guy's in jail or the guy's been 
released free. Uh, if people want to know what's going on, they have the right to know what's going on. So we'll continue to move here. And one of the reasons I guess they may not want to tell people what's actually going on is because maybe they're embarrassed by things like this. Raw food raid. Armed agents bust raw milk and cheese sellers. Now this is an example from California, but I'd be pretty embarrassed if I had all this gear and all these weapons and the big uh, Bearcat vehicles and I was busting down the door of a, uh, a cheese maker because I can imagine these guys sitting around the table like the old veterans do and the old police officers. You see them at the diners and so forth. And they say, yeah, I remember back in you know 2014 and I did that SWAT raid and we busted down. We found 15 drug dealers and drug smugglers and human traffickers and AK-47s and AR-15s. And then the other guy says, yeah, I remember I did a SWAT raid and uh, we got those guys selling that raw cheese. Say, like, well, uh, I mean, what, is that weapons of mass destruction? Why are you have to bust down the door of somebody selling cheese or milk across state lines? Don't we have real crimes and real things that need to be investigated? Like uh, who's running guns into Mexico? I mean, can we look into something like that? But no, they want to go uh, go down here and bust the people for selling raw milk and cheese. It's completely ridiculous. Now let's hit some bullet points about these SWAT team raids. We have this 10 facts about the SWATification of America that everyone should know. And for the sake of time, I'll just hit a few here. We'll start with number one. In 1980, there were approximately 3,000 SWAT raids in the United States. Now there are more than 80,000 SWAT raids per year in this country. Let's scroll down to number six. In the last, excuse me, at least 36% of all SWAT raids, there is no contraband of any kind found by the police. I think that's pretty relevant. And let's drop down to number nine. Only 7% of all SWAT deployments are for hostage, barricade, and or active shooter scenarios. So hitting those three bullet points, and you can see the full article on Infowars.com, let's focus on number nine. In only 7% of the deployments, is there a hostage situation or an active shooter or some type of barricade? Because um, you think about a SWAT team situation, or at least in my mind, the reason why these guys would be deployed, you have, you know, the, uh, the iconic bank robbery and the guys are in there and they got the guns, everybody down on the ground. Okay, you need a SWAT team for that. Or maybe there's some domestic dispute and, you know, the guy's holding the knife to the girlfriend or whatever. You may need a, a SWAT team for that. Of course, an active shooter situation. I can understand that as well. But why are you sending SWAT teams into a situation where there's no immediate threat? Because they love doing these no-knock raids. It's completely ridiculous, but uh, they continue to do these things. And sometimes these situations backfire on the officers themselves. We have this. Murder charges dropped against man who killed cop in a no-knock raid. A Texas grand jury refused to indict a central Texas man on Wednesday for shooting and killing an officer who entered his home serving a warrant unannounced. And this is a situation that happened, uh, I guess, around 6 a.m. Uh, the sheriff busted into this guy's door. This happened uh, late last year. And the guy, being a Texan, was armed. And the uh, cops come busting through his house, and he shoots one of them and kills them. Or I believe this was a a sheriff's officer. And as sad as these stories are, these things happen because you have these no-knock raids. You have this uh, culture because it's not enough to go to this guy's house and knock on the door, you know, how they used to do. You send one guy to the front, one guy to the back in case he tries to run out the back, serve the warrant, here you go, and that's the end of it. No, they get all these, uh, these big DHS-funded things and these things from uh, the military, these surplus vehicles, so they have to show it off. They have to make use of it. So these guys dress up, you know, like Master Chief from Halo, and they go kicking somebody's door. And you know, state of Texas, you're either going to get shot, shot at, or you're going to catch the guy in the act of reaching for his firearm. And unfortunately for this officer, he was actually shot and killed. But at the same time, the officer shouldn't have been in the guy's house in the first place, or at least under these pretenses of doing these no-knock raids, just like they did one uh, on my neighbor. Now, I don't want to go as far as say that's a no-knock raid because this happened at 5 a.m. and I, it woke me up out of a dead sleep. So I can't say that whether it was or wasn't um, announced. But basically, they uh, bust into my neighbor's apartment, battering ram. We got pictures of that. And the cops are running around. He comes and slams my door. And people are like, why'd you open the door in the first place? Because, you know, you have to look out for each other because they have the guy hogtied down on the ground with his girlfriend and his friends. So I'm just trying to videotape, you know, for his uh, for his protections, but the police didn't want that. And then they refused, or I guess for a while, refused to give me the details of why they were there in the first place. Didn't know I could just walk around them and go get the affidavit, which I eventually did. 
And for the record, I don't think that guy, if you guys remember that last year, he may have been a little nickel and dimer, but that guy was not moving as much dope as necessary to send a SWAT team after him. We lived in some pretty crappy apartments. The guys who get the SWAT team range are your Scarface types. They live out in suburbia at a nice house, and, you know, they got the yard boy and all that. We didn't have that. That guy was not moving that much dope, if he was moving any dope at all. So murder charges drop against these guys in these no-knock raids. And we'll, uh, we'll continue with this. Police now armed for war against returning veterans. When I first started, we, we really didn't have the, the violence that we see today. Um, the weaponry is totally different now than it was in, in my, the beginning of my career. Um, plus, you have a lot of people that are coming out of the military that have the ability and the knowledge to, to build IEDs and, and to defeat law enforcement techniques. So did you hear what he said? That was Sergeant Dan Downing from the Morgan County Sheriff's Department. That's in Illinois. He said we have to get prepared because of all these returning veterans who know how to make IEDs. Now, maybe there is a rash of IED attacks that I'm not aware of, but this is what the guy said he's preparing for. And I say all that to say this is I have no you know, general issue with the police. I definitely have a problem with police brutality, the uh, use of tasers for compliance and many other things. He's no-knock raids and so forth, but I understand your average officer is on the street. He's just following orders and doing what he thinks is best to police his city. Now, with that said, I don't have an issue with the police in general, but when you have all this unaccountability, that's where my problem starts because people say, you guys in InfoWars, you're pro-violence toward police. No, we have guys on like Sheriff Nick Finch from Florida who stood up for the Second Amendment. We have guys on like uh, Sheriff David Clark in Milwaukee standing up for the Second Amendment and many other people. Uh, many of those constitutional sheriffs and peace officers have been guests on this show. I've even interviewed some of them in studio. So we don't hate police. We just hate police brutality and police unaccountability, especially when it comes to our veterans. That's completely uncalled for. And if these guys really want to get after uh, the bad guys, they need to go arrest these guys who are uh, down on the border just standing down and not saying, and even that's a whole nother deal. The Border Patrol is being ordered to stand down, so that's why they are not out there enforcing the laws of the land. They're capturing these people, playing catch and release, and just letting them go. Same thing with ICE. We talked to the ICE whistleblower. He said, we're not keeping people in our facilities just because we don't have enough space to house them. So if you really want to do something, go down to the border and secure that. But I know you guys have a tough job, so I'm trying to cut you some slack, but man, you guys need to have some accountability and uh, hold your, your supervisors, the big guys, hold their feet to the fire. So we ended this story talking about how they're uh, coming against the returning veterans, but it's not just the police that are cracking down on the veterans. If you live in the wrong neighborhood, your homeowners association will come after you. 73-year-old veteran threatened with foreclosure for displaying American flag. It's not a flag on a pole. In fact, it is barely noticeable. It's a flag in a flower pot sitting right here at the front door. And the HOA in this community is telling the homeowner the flag has got to go. The homeowner is Larry Murphy, and he's drawn a line in the sand. They're trying to uh, get a foreclosure on my house so the house could go. So that's why the flag's upside down. So how dare you, veteran, in a land where you can't get uh, treatment at the VA facility, in a land where they're putting the illegal immigrants in these uh, military bases, but uh, we have homeless veterans laying on the street. How dare you want to have a flag on your property? And when I first heard this story, I was like, well, maybe this guy has one of those big flags like you see at the, uh, at the car shops or whatever. They have these huge poles and these huge flags, and maybe that's what people are complaining about. He still would have the right to do it. But no, it's not the case at all. A veteran who, lo and behold, wants to fly the colors of his country that he fought for puts a flag in a flower pot, and that's too much for these people in this particular, in this particular location. Because it's not just here. We've seen the reports in California how the students cannot wear American flag t-shirts because it's insensitive to uh, other students of different uh, countries, from different countries. Also, the guy last week who was told that he cannot have an American flag on his balcony at his apartment because it may upset Muslims. It's completely ridiculous. This is the United States of America. If you want to fly a flag, if you want to wear an American flag t-shirt, you have the right to do this. You can't go to Mexico. I can't go to Canada and say, hey, man, you guys need to take down that maple leaf because I like, uh, I like.